everyone, and welcome to this painting video for Valen Hanuk, the Fallen Knight of the Infernal's Army of War Machine. Yeah, they're, they're considered a War Machine army. They had to put them under one of the two. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about a guy on a horse with a big sword and armor for both him and the, and the horse. So, starting off, I'm painting the skin, hide, whatever it would be called of the horse, a light gray, not a super light gray, which I used later, but this is more like a mid-range, but it is still lighter that I use for the base coat when I want it to look gray when it's done. This horse is very sickly, if not just an infernal creature or undead altogether. I, I don't know more about that later, but that's pretty much all that I do with the flesh. Uh, this model and has a lot of little tiny intricate details all over the place but not a lot of colors thankfully so i didn't end up having to swap back and forth between some colors like i imagine the solo that came out via riot quest through this army it's just going to be a nightmare even though it's a fraction of the size of this in terms of surface area but yeah i really did enjoy painting this model actually unfortunately this is a, one of the models that got screwed up from a ghosting of the uh, varnishing uh, ghosting being when the varnish clear uh, coat comes out not too well and ends up kind of either solidifying in bubbles or various different things and it results in it looking all speckled white uh the the infernal master came out worse this one's still decent like I, i'm still okay with this one i won't want to repaint it so Next, I get on to a darker gray. This is the darkest gray that I have, and this is for the cloth under the armor. While I do forget to paint in the video the chain mail, that ends up being done in the metal that I use for the base coat of the plates itself. But yeah, that's just another part that's underneath the armor. Figuring out that this was a different part at first was a bit of an issue. And also, I had to make the decision whether I wanted it to be the same color as the wrappings that are around the legs or not was uh, another part to the whole thing. Obviously, I went with not because I mentioned that it is a different color. But when it comes to separating things, uh, I don't realize that the neck's not covered in wrappings, but we'll get to that later. So a quick uh, coat of flesh for the face, uh, a paler flesh. Of course, I don't think this is the palest that I usually use. I think this might be the next darkest coat, but whatever. Then a nice bright red on all the different glowing parts. So the various, as you can see, kind of holes on the horse helmet and just above its nose. Again, what is this thing? Like, please, Privateer Press, tell me, what is this thing? Also... His armor, as is with a lot of the infernal armor, be it the things of Cain or not. I can't remember if I'm saying the planet's name right. And the sword itself, although it's only sort of glowing, like I feel like it's supposed to also be red, not just glow red, but I do end up doing some object like a painting later in this video, specifically with the sword. So, onto the wrappings, which are being done in, I believe, I did a tannish color. I did paint this model nearly two years ago from the time that I'm recording this audio. And I end up painting its neck, as you can see right now, the same color. Because I thought it was genuine wrappings. It took till I saw multiple pictures and everything and just took a good hard look at it to realize, no, the thing is just so sickly if at all alive i paint his hair for a base coat the same color because i want it to come out blonde but not uh you know i want it to be a somewhat dirty blonde but not too dark of a dirty blonde so that's usually what i use for the base coat of that and then it later gets highlighted with yellow then my darkest metal or at least you know iron like metal that i use is being used on the plate itself this will cover the plate for both the armor on the horse and also on the rider. 
Valen, who I had forgotten the name for a bit there. Ha ha. I'm being very careful around the eyes and everything like that of the face mask for the horse because I don't want to have to repaint the red. Honestly, there was a lot of this model I was way too careful with. If you've watched a lot of my past, or pretty much any of my past, painting videos, especially the non-Dark Souls ones because of the paint style that I use for that, but primarily the Kingdom Death stuff, I should say. I usually do what's a slot base coat, and I'm not really, you know, ignoring that here, such as the fact that the bridle is being just completely painted over there a moment ago, and just completely ignored, where, uh, for a combination of reasons, it's just quicker for me to sloppily paint colors on, get them on there, and fix it. Uh, partially motivation reasons, but also other reasons as well. Uh, I'm also being careful with the red around here, and that's not the kind of careful that I'm talking about. Like, oh boy, I was really careful with the base coat on a lot of this. And it just made it take so much longer. Although, this model didn't take too long. The Infernals were a nice, uh, uh, well, a nice kick in the ass for my motivation at the time. I, I was having trouble painting anything, hadn't painted anything for months. Uh, wave 1 in the Infernals had arrived, and I'd been looking forward to painting them. And this was, I think, the second model that I painted in the army. So, on to a off-white gray being used as a base coat for things that I want to look white. Which ends up being the horse's hair. Because, again, what the hell is wrong with this horse? Or what is it if it's, like, not a horse? It's got a skull for a face, or a skull over its face, which took me a bit to realize, but thankfully I realized before painting, and then we get onto the hair, and oh my, there are just so many strands of hairs on this thing's head, like, I love it and I hate it, I love painting this model, but like I said, there were so many intricate little details that, while they weren't a lot of different colors, it was still just, you gotta catch up them all, because otherwise they'll stand out later when you don't have it right like a big thing here was telling the difference between what was probably a deeper strand of hair like deeper into the mix closer to the body or what was flesh uh, as he didn't have any armor there and then some black to make sure that anything that i messed up is cleaned up on the cloak and pants which are both just black cloth uh, i don't leave them matte black i don't do that with a lot of war machine models uh, i did that a lot with a lot of hair that i've been painting lately for cthulhu death may die though it's also being used on the hooves and then on to brass the, this is for things that are meant to be gold by the end of it and will be highlighted with the gold but brass is the base coat and honestly it's kind of hard to tell the difference at first one next to each other you'll notice but without the other the first one will look like well, gold. And it pretty much gets used for the adornment of all the armor, and I love it. Uh, I, I love using gold as a accent to colors and uh, to other colors, especially darker ones. Uh, I, it was probably one of the big reasons that I went with Cricks at first. Uh, I, it was a lot of gold accents on black. And it's not really used a lot in this army, from what I remember, because it's mostly silver on black, but this thing's an exception. So, it was really nice to do. And I love how, like, the, the shapes of all of it on the armor and everything. Whew, it, it, this was actually a lot of fun to paint. I, I am, again, a little upset that it got messed up from the varnish coat, but, again, not to the point that the infernal master did where it's just like uh i might want to repaint that one day but that that's a different story entirely so there's also a bit of on the armor which again intricate details the part on the breastplate was really hard to see while the part of the shoulder is just really obvious so you would expect just like with the horse armor for it to be really obvious everywhere but it, it wasn't then some bone for well this thing's face which is made of bone or covered in bone and i don't remember or know i want to know and then some more details that don't stand out until they're kind of pointed out or you're holding the thing right in front of you it has spikes coming out of its back 
like out of the back of its neck. It's just weird. And then a kind of sickly pink being used for the two gems. Those will then later get painted with a highlight to make it stand out more and gloss varnished with multiple coats after the matte varnish so that they stand out more. Then ink wash. I am a person who is guilty of the drench your models in black ink. Because you know what? It makes a lot of things stand out. Uh, I didn't want to do the sword, but I end up doing it anyway because there's just too many details in it to feel okay about hiding. Part of me did want to repaint the inner part a lighter color and then the outer part that's currently red a slightly darker color, but I just went with an ink wash. Uh, I do mention that because I avoid the rest of the red parts on the model. So all the sunk in areas that are supposed to be glowing as opposed to a thing that's, you know, it is just that. So, yeah. But I like using black because, honestly, stuff like this right here, where it just brings out all the details. I still have some issue with flesh, especially larger portions of flesh and I, I, I like Brewfest Aya from Kingdom Death Monster, the larger version I painted recently and that was a oh this just looks like it's dirty now but you know what it still looks better than it did without this and it's something that I gotta work on. I even bought a new ink wash specifically to use for lighter flesh tones at least larger exposed areas be that a larger model or just like some shirtless dude, like I can imagine, for Doom Reavers. Or things along those lines. Or Butcher 4 is a Doom Reaver. I digress. So, again, yeah, makes a lot of details stand out. Getting it to stay in the openings of the cloths, the cloth, like the torn parts, was a little difficult, actually. Uh, one of the big things that I have to be mindful of with ink wash is not to let it settle in large pools too much. Uh, I end up being guilty of that with the legs, but I don't mind it too much because those are more sunken recesses, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. But you got to remember to, after you apply some ink wash or any watered-down color that's watered down to the intent where it's uh, to not be too thick, um, to soak some of it up because otherwise it just ends up a mess. But then again, I'm also not a person who waters down my paints all that much, if at all, because I, again, I'm a person who just has to sit there and apply paint to the model in order to get it done. And there's some of it being applied to his hair, which makes it stand out even more, like the reason of, like, why I use black ink wash. Uh, hair, fine, claw, uh, fine details in cloth, uh, not like big giant folds and things like that. Um, so like on the cape, if this wasn't black, it would be a place where it wouldn't be too great, but I'd still use it. I have that happening a lot lately when I painted the various cultists for Cthulhu Death May Die this past month. And the face, which, oh boy, gotta make sure to soak up that stuff just right. Oh, also his eyes are red. Forgot to paint that on video. So, onto the dry brush highlight coat. I always do my highlights with a dry brush I just have found it to work better and sometimes I feel like it's not doing anything but this was a model both in the final version looking back at it and when I was re-watching this video to make sure to you know edit out any of the useless bits oh boy does it stand out real well like how much this does oh and you can see right there that I did repaint the neck to match the flesh hide whatever you would call it for the rest of the horse which is what's being dry brushed at the moment um also before people comment about like how horrible that brush is that brush isn't used anymore except when i purposely want something that's just a messy brush <laughs> oh oh boy yeah again years ago had higher priorities with money when it came to other things when or stuff like this honestly yeah i digress so, yeah, lots of flesh to color over and everything like that, but it doesn't take too long. And then, and for that, I was using the same gray that was the base coat of the hair. And just like how, or and, and just like how with the cloth, I'm using the same base coat of the hide. 
you know, just a shade lighter most of the time. Very few times I want to go more than one shade. Sometimes I use the same shade. That's actually happened a lot with uh, red, especially if the way I want it to come out is um, the specific red that's used in this model. Although that's not the case in, in this case. Um, it, that definitely gets highlighted a brighter red. So onto the flesh, uh, which yeah, there isn't a lot. It's just his face that's exposed. Some dark gray being coincidentally for black cloth using the gray for the not black cloth, the gray cloth, or its base coat as a highlight. Uh, it's what I use on a lot of blacks, although I did use a more burgundy red on a previous model um, not too long ago, like previous at the time of recording this audio, not previous to painting this. Uh, if, I don't remember what I painted before, too long before this. Uh, then some brighter metal for the various parts of the armor. That doesn't really end up showing up too well, but it's there. And it's one of those weird ones. Because again, sometimes this stuff doesn't show up well with the highlight. But when you can see it, it's really good. It makes a real big difference of making details stand out. And just, oh boy, having to be careful. Making sure not to go over things I already did that I'm not about to go over. Like how I'm going to go over the gold eventually, or the brass with gold. Doing the hooves real quick, because I forgot about the yellow for the hair to make it look more blonde-ish, and it really, the difference really stands out for this. Same thing with the horse's hair, but yeah. Also, sorry about the focus throughout all of this. The autofocus was crazy for recording this model. And now, I believe onto the gold. Yes, it, the, the brush looks yellow, partially because it, well, kind of is, but also, you know, it's gold. Uh, and this doesn't really make too much stand out, at least on camera, but in person, this really, really helps a lot. It, it makes a huge difference, providing that it's not too watered down in the process. Uh, my gold mixture, as well as a lot of my metallics, I don't know if this is just a thing with metallics, or if it's just the ones I have, because it's not all of them, I usually really need to be shaken up more than most. Like, it's very runny until I shake it up real good, and yeah. And then some white for the hair, and I believe I also end up using this on the wrappings, because I'm trying to make them look more like a stereotypical bandage color, but a dirty bandage color, and the combination of the tannish color that I use mixed with the black ink wash and then just a light white on it I believe it was makes it stand out more as just like uh, honestly kind of disgusting makes the the darker recesses look well more darker and then some white on the sword because well I wanted to emphasize on the fact that it's bright it's supposed to be really bright Bright enough that it then ends up shining on the model itself, which is highlighted later. Not too much later, as I'm doing a bright silver to get all the rivets and things like that, that I wanted that color, and then some white again to get the shine, air quotes, on the gems. But yeah, here's the, the red shine. I use a little bit on the mask, the shoulder, but mostly on his leg and yeah it just makes it a lot better and that's the entire model folks thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did feel free to press that like button if you think somebody else will enjoy this video feel free to share it either way you'll help this video get seen more if you didn't like this video go ahead and press the dislike button i won't mind but please leave a constructive comment as to why even if you think i paint horribly go for it also, feel free to comment in general, such as, would you like to see any of my other models painted? I have a good chunk of the Infernals, in fact, although I did paint a lot of them without recording, because it was during a time in which I wasn't recording a lot of gruntish models, like, for example, all the cultists, the base ones. Or would you like to hear me talk more about War Machine Hordes or other miniature games? Um, I, War Machine Hordes is my favorite role-playing setting. I'm looking forward to the 5th edition version, even though I'm not a fan of 5th edition, honestly, but more than willing to talk about it in general, or the game itself. Uh, 
regardless of which version we're talking, miniature game or role-playing game. And if you'd like to see more like this, be it more painting videos, my unboxing videos, my board game overviews, all three of which I'm willing to do for Privateer Press products, and anything else you might want to see on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.